Excellent. Hello, hello. Welcome um, to uh, Fedora 37. So, pre-release party. I'd say congratulations on the uh, pre-release. Uh, Fedora, I, I am just as a note, I am running on the 37 beta on a Z16 right now. So if it all goes wrong, we'll blame the hardware, okay? Yeah, good. Uh, I'm just gonna put this up briefly. This is kind of what I want to cover. As usual, very happy to take questions as we go along. I particularly wanna to get to the help needed section uh, at the bottom. Just You'll see why it's, it's a good help needed, but um, I think it's good. But uh, yep, so we I will rattle through a little bit fairly quickly. I will keep an eye on the Q&A tab just if questions come in as we go along, I'll try and take them and I will try and leave a section at the end for, for any questions. Alrighty. So for a quick introduction, I think fortunately most people know me, but if you don't, uh, the technical lead for Lenovo Linux PC, I've been working with them for about 20 years, working on the Linux PC side, particularly for the last three. So the eagle-eyed amongst you on the very first page, the main reason I put this up is I'm changing my email address. So uh, I have my kind of like open source friendly one is markpearson.lenovo.com. That still works. You can still use it to get in touch with me. You're very welcome to if you want to send to a lenovo.com address. I'm not leaving Lenovo, but I'm sick and tired of Outlook. <laughs> and it's just driving me nuts. So I have set up my own domain, square.ca, my own email. So mpearson.lenovo at square.ca will get to me. I'm still transitioning. It's, you know, I've had it about a month and I haven't really switched anything over, but, um, now, if you want to get in touch with me, those are the addresses, and uh, you are very welcome to. I love hearing from people, genuinely. Um, so, what we're here for, Fedora Platform Status 2022. So, I, think I have more good news than usual. Usually, it's just like a mix. It is still a mix, it's good and bad, but uh, generally, it's been a good year. So, so, so much better than last year, which is great. So, start with some good news. Uh, Exxon Carbon 10, the Z Z13, Z13, wherever you're from, and the Z16 are uh, with Fedora are all online in Europe. You can go and buy them and actually the next picture will have a show the French site. So they are all available with Fedora 36. Um, you have to go, it's all under build, uh, the config to order, the build your PC option. We don't have any ready to ship Fedora. We can get to that later with Help Wanted. Um, but you go under there, I'll show you in a second, you choose Linux Fedora and uh, go from there. I will just add the caveat, it is a little bit rough around the edges, um, but please be nice to the European web team for this. So they've really stepped up. They've made it much easier for me to get the Linux platforms up online quickly. And, and that makes a, a huge difference. So they actually have a ton of our systems, not all of them, but they, they have a whole bunch of them and they, they come in and they go up when they're available, which is something we've not had before. And it means that it's not, perfect as an experience and things for example like the MIPI camera on the X1 Carbon in the X1 Yoga for this year you don't don't choose it as an option it doesn't work under Linux uh, we can cover that later um, but if you choose Windows go choose the MIPI camera and then go choose Fedora it comes up with an invalid configuration message so a little bit of patience um, Generally, with the Linux program, everything that is available for Windows is available for Linux, but there's a few things like the MIPI camera and the WAN that are not. Um, so, yeah, just it'll get better. And from my point of view, I'm just happy to be able to have them online. Um, the US has been much slower. It's kind of been like opposite of previously. The US team have been much slower this year for various reasons, and we can get to those again later. Uh, we do have the X1 Carbon 10 online with Fedora. It's there. The others are coming. I was in a meeting with them yesterday, reviewing some platforms, so they are going to come. I just is taking time uh, for a whole host of reasons to do with how they do process, but, but they are coming. Um, P14 SAMD Gen 3, P16 SAMD Gen 3 will both be getting Fedora releases. They are ready to go, but we were just about to enter testing and Fedora 37 was around the corner. So I said, no, let's wait, let's do Fedora 37. It's kind of ridiculous sending it out with Fedora 36 immediately after 37 lands and of course delays. So they will be happening. Just, you know, we, that's essentially, I, I made the call that I would rather wait for Fedora 37. So uh, I figure by the time everything wraps up, you know, it, it makes sense. They're going to be on their way. And the other good news is so far, the P1 Gen 5 and P16 Gen 1, um, are they, now they're the ones with the NVIDIA card. So previous years, 
we've had real hassle with them. They're looking doable. So I won't know until it's been through the full test program because I have limited, I don't have all the different video, different configurations. So that's still, still got to go through, but we've done a lot of pre-testing and it's looking good. It's, it's still, honestly, the sad truth is with the NVIDIA cards is you want to use the NVIDIA binary driver, but the Nuvo driver, they've done a ton of work on that. Kudos to, to the engineers working on that. It is getting better. And it's got to the stage where it's good enough that we can do a preload and it be at a high enough standard to get it out. I, it'd still be one of those if you buy one. I sadly recommend installing the Closal driver, but it is totally usable with the uh, Nuvo driver. And things like external display were working, which weren't previously. So that's on the Fedora one. So yeah, the snapshot there was on the X1 Carbon taken. I did these slides a couple of days ago. So taken on the US site, go to, they had for the US site, they have a with Linux option. So you go under that. And this is, this is off the French site, just randomly. I usually choose different sites around Europe to go test those. Um, so as you can see, you have to go into the, uh, build your PC. And then there they've taken a slightly different approach. You can choose Windows, pay extra. 20 euros, 150 or Linux. Um, there is one thing I will come to. There is a, a no OS option in Europe uh, or in French, but the system d'exploitation. Um, so that actually is no OS and it is still cheaper than Linux. Um, I will come to that later with the um, help wanted just to explain why. Um, so anyway, but yep, so systems available. That's, uh, that is kind of the good news and that's uh, on the floor front. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this slide. Um, but just, you know, we have more, you know, more platforms than we do Fedora. I would love to do more Fedora. It's honestly, it's a, it's a resource challenge. It's, uh, you know, it, it takes a lot of testing cycles to do. Fedora runs great on our platforms. I run it on a whole bunch, but from a, a to get it officially through, it takes resources and we're, we're a small team. We're just, we have a lot of platforms. So I just put this up. So if there's a reference, if it's got a star next to it, it basically means it's done. We, we've signed off on it. It's been through all the process and it should be ready uh if it's got a tilde next to it it's close um might be like the e14 has got some energy certification issues and the the, the few of the amds there are just on the on the last few steps i think the only one that is still in active enablement so to speak is the p15b AMD. Yes, that one's still got some issues that we're working on but generally for the rest um it should mean everything is upstream working um i think it's the first time i've ever put the sync centers on i generally previously have kind of avoided them because i didn't like how we did the linux program on them but they've really stepped up so i'm mentioning there um it's you know for, for the desktop side of things they're, they're interesting and they they now run well and they're now doing so on lbfs and all that stuff oh and there's a couple of edge platforms which probably might, I don't know if they're of interest to anybody, but we do have a couple of the edge-related platforms. Alrighty. Just a quick check on the cameras. Aha, ha, perfect timing, Christian. Thank you. There was a, a question in there about any chance Lenovo will provide the drivers out of the box, and this is for the MIPI camera. So thank you for that segue. Um, one, I'll have to come back to yours in a bit, sorry. So uh, yeah, MIPI camera, basically, we are blocking it on our Linux preloads. You can still go back system with MIPI camera with Windows, or oh, interestingly with no OS. Uh, but with Linux, uh, it's it's not ready, it's, it's, it's not there. Um, there is a workaround using the V4 L2 loopback uh, driver, uh, and it's kind of ugly. Um, we do actually have instructions on how to get it working with the Ubuntu 5.15 kernel. We'll come back to that in a second. There is some fixes that have come to now or on the cusp been done so you can do it with a 6.0 kernel, which is better. Um, I'm still not recommending it, even with that workaround. Like if you have one of these platforms, you can get it up, you can get the camera working. This beautiful photo in the slide deck uh, is taken with the MIPI camera on the X1 Nano. Um, so you can get it working, um, but it's, 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 it's a little bit limited. Honestly, it's still quite clunky. Uh, your power usage becomes not great. I, I just, it's not a good experience. So I'm still not recommending it. Um, that being said, we are working with a couple of the Red Hat engineers with Hans and Kate, and they are awesome. Um, so there will be a solution for Fedora. I believe they're gonna put it in RPM Fusion. Um, and they have been really helpful for pushing things along and getting it upstream. It's been slow, painful going, but like just in, in a week or two, they, they, they did a bunch of stuff. Amazing. Anyway, so th there will be a solution. 
Um, and one of the things, and I hope I'm not, I don't think I'm saying anything that isn't public, but might be one of those you have found out. So I know they're looking at doing a pipe wire interface. And what that would do is that would get rid of this whole V4 L2 loopback where it goes into user space, back down to scale, back up into user space, and all the, all the, the nonsense that comes with that. So I think once they have that, I will be ready to say, yes, this is something we can work with Linux. It still has issues with this closed source user space piece that is needed to make it work. It has to take the IP from Intel and working with Intel on that. Um, the longer term solution when I think it will become more complex is the camera, but I don't have any good timelines and honestly it's looking, looking way out. So that's the status on the MIPI camera. Um, there is work like, so Intel have got it in their repositories. We're doing as much as possible as open source. The main bit is that the actual processing of the MIPI stream, Intel do not want to open source that. And actually, I don't think there's any hardware vendor who does currently. So that's the update on the MIPI camera. So I hope that answers your question, Christian. I'm seeing a bunch of stuff in the chat. Well, I'm not seeing it, but there's a few things in the chat. I, if I'm missing anything, uh, let me know. Ah, yes, thank you for the people who are filling in the gaps in my knowledge. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, and, and just as so the MIPI is interesting. It'll be nice when we get to fully with it. The, the camera quality is actually quite good. Um, and it, yeah, it's, uh, I think it, it'll be good. But it's it's going to be painful to get there. I ready. Uh, for Yorga, uh, your question, which cameras have them? Um, so the MIPI camera, so if you're on our site, they call it computer vision. So it has CV or computer vision. At the moment, X1 Carbon, X1 Yoga, X1 Nano are the only three that have it. And I'm probably not supposed to say it, but I think that's, I think that's the same next year. I'm gonna have the caveat, I think it's the same next year. So they are the ones. The big, big downside is they tied the MIPI camera to the high res panel, which is the same. So that 2.8K OLED panel is nice, but you only get it with the MIPI camera. So they kind of, they went to this high-end skew, and they went to that. So that's the, uh, but yeah, just the, the three things at the moment. Um, I think we're, uh, my concern is I think you'll see more and more of these uh, in the industry as it goes forward. Um, and I think we really need to push hard to make sure that Linux has a solution. Uh, ready. So I just like, one, I did read your question. I'm, I'll come back to that one later, just on because I don't have a good segue to it, but I, I will come back to it. You're not, not ignoring you. Alrighty, uh, I mentioned this one quickly because it's been a fun project, and I did uh, I did an update of the, the presentation earlier in the year. We did a proof of concept project with Arm and Lenaro on getting Linux up and running on uh, X13S. Apologies that the screenshot is Debian. We really need to get a Fedora up and running on there. And it's getting increasingly close to being possible. Um, basically, they have Linux up and running. Lenaro patches are in the process of being submitted upstream. Some have landed, some are under review, some have still yet to go. Uh, majority of hardware is now working, which is exciting. A few exceptions uh, that I will come to below. But it's we're getting to the stage where we're I think we're going to start working with the different distros to see what we can do. And obviously, I would love Fedora to, to be a part of that. And uh, Peter Robinson has one of these platforms. So ho hopefully, we, we can make some things happen. Um, just some little highlights to, of what's involved with doing this. So uh, all the firmware blobs, the Qualcomm firmware blobs that are needed to get a bunch of functionality, those are all upstream in Linux firmware. And from my point of view, that was kind of nice. I tried to do a similar exercise previously and was told I wasn't allowed to. So that was that for me was a personally a good one. It's like, yes, those are those are now available upstream. Um, working with the bootloader team or the boot you know the, the boot team to add this is this DTB loader ESI module. And so we're looking to have an experimental Linux mode that turns this on and basically loads in the device tree and lets the Linux kernel boot. It's all part of making it so you can install Linux and it will, will run easily. Um, bits that aren't done just uh, so for, for convenience. So the GPU uh, is still not uh, up and running. It's in progress. They don't think there should be any blockers. It's just the case of got to actually figure it out and get it working. Um, the NVRAM, which uh, is kind of actually more annoying than you'd think. And I don't really have a good timeline for it. They think it's possible. They just don't know when. And the main reason that's a pain is because that kind of is used for setting the boot variable. So you can just, you know, the moment you have to go and do these magic commands from these shells to, to get the working and this also sadly for the camera and uh, uh, 
we don't have a plan for that one yet. So, uh, I put some links in there if anybody is interested in that one. It's been a fun project and um, yeah, a bit a bit different to what we usually do, but it's been it's been interesting. And the missing thing is help wanted section again. <laughs> so uh, let's let's get to that. I'm hoping that's readable for everybody. Um, so basically, we've had as anybody who has listened to my talks. Uh, ongoing, we've had lots of issues getting these platforms actually online to buy, uh, and lots of them have been internal issues with configurators and just supply chain and all all the stuff which I talked about previously. And don't want to rehash, but this year we got our platforms out almost on schedule, pretty pretty close, and um, it's now a case of pushing the web teams and product team to to know that people want these, right? That's basically like in the US, it's largely the reason that these things are going slow. So um, one of the fantastic things with Linux, privacy is key, privacy is important. I have absolutely no way of knowing that you've installed Linux on your Lenovo laptop. And uh, I know there's a question from one about the, you know, the Legion Slim 7. And if you go and install Linux on that, I don't know you've done it. So from the problem is is from the web team the product team they're just like yeah everybody wants to install windows it's kind of neat so we need to let them know uh so this is kind of how i started spreading this is this is kind of what i stumbled on is i think it's a good solution I'm trying to spread the word to do it um there is a feedback link on the website and i put a screenshot and there's a right tiny on the left hand corner kind of hard to find but that's my current recommendation and so if you're genuinely wanting to buy a Linux system, if you're thinking about it and you can't get it, go and let them know. If, uh, if you wanted to go and buy a Fedora system and they only have you bunch of go and let them know. Um, so it's it's important. I did actually get shut down by the, I'm not, probably not supposed to say this, but by the South America uh, web sales team saying that there's no demand for Linux. I'm like, I don't think that's true, but it's possible. They might be right because we, don't do all the you know the full range of Lenovo platforms, so they might be right. And in which case, we need to let the product teams know that if you want Linux on the Lenovo Legion Slim 7 AMD Advantage Edition, uh, thank you, one, then um, let them know because that's how they're going to gauge whether there's actual demand. Because otherwise, I have very limited tools to actually figure this stuff out. Um, if you did purchase the Windows system or the no OS system, um, and you would prefer to buy a Linux system, I believe you get a customer survey quite quickly after buying the system. If you do that, that one is fantastic. That's a great one to give some feedback saying, hey, I bought this, hopefully you like the hardware, but I really wish Linux came preloaded on it or supported on it. Then make sure to let them know. Um, I wanted to call out the X13S because we've been through quite the exercise. I, I mean, honestly, working with ARM and Lenaro, they've been great to collaborate with. And so now we're getting to the stage where it's interesting, but uh, we've got to let the product team know this is real. And the problem is nobody's going to be able to buy a preload for this because they're not going to have one. It's all going to be people doing it in the background, enthusiasts. And it's like, okay, how do I take this to the next level to say, um, Go ahead and so I've got a note from moderation one. What does that mean? Have I done something bad? I don't know who I, I if somebody put something in the chat if I've it's got moderation one and being moderated. I don't know why. Um <laughs> anyway. So um yeah, again, it's um let let me know. Uh well it's more case not letting me know actually, because I will enthusiastically support, but I want to try and get more than, than, than my voice doing it. Uh, an important one, keep it honest, please don't game the system. Honestly, we'll all lose if we do that. So it's literally only do it if you're genuinely thinking about it. You're, you're not fast, that's cool, that's okay, that's not what, I mean, I am personally, the Linux program is not in trouble, the Linux program is going ahead and it's doing well. Um, and I'm very happy that we can say, you can go buy a system and put Linux on it and, and it'd be supported, that, that's the key point. Um, this is really aimed at just doing the preload web sales uh, piece. Um, there was a question about where the link for the feedback form. It should just be on the web sales page. Like this, if you go look, if you pull up the Lenovo page right down at the bottom left, and it's tiny, um, 
I should probably actually pull the page up, but if you go look bottom left, there's this little feedback. I think that's a good way. I know it goes straight through to web teams because they got hit by a bunch of requests for Linux on one of the platforms at one point, and it, it worked. So don't abuse it, but honest feedback is, is good. It's, it's good for Lenovo to, to hear the thing. I, quick shout out, because I know in Europe you can buy the no OS options and honestly it's a smart thing to do uh, they are cheaper than linux i think you say 20 or 30 euros um on it and it's the same system and fedora will run fantastically on it so i totally totally understand if you want to save some money while you go do that i do want to flag that what you're giving up with that is that it means lenovo will not recognize that as a linux sale so if, yeah if money's important it's more important you get hardware and you can put and Fedora runs well on it. But if you can spend that extra, we appreciate it. A little bit of money goes towards funding my team, which hopefully will mean we can grow and do more platforms. It, you know, so I did want to mention just so you understand that is, and you know, it's one of those things. <laughs> given how painful it's been getting these out, you might be sitting there going, "Yeah, no thanks, I'll, I'll keep the money." And 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 I understand that. Alrighty, uh, what else have I missed? So. Ooh, I'm on top of the question. And how am I doing for time? I can't actually see the time. Never mind. I'll keep going until someone tells me to shut up. Go. Oh, I've got a few minutes. Okay. Um, I had a slide on WAN. I know it's not for everybody, but it's sometimes an interesting topic. So I will put that up. Uh, WAN has been quite hard. One of the interesting things that did come out uh, of working with the web teams is they get quite frustrated when we have differences from Windows. And I don't want them. I want the same hardware to be supported for Linux as for Windows. And we WAN has been, been a big one. Um, so we've been working on WAN support. It's always really, really late. And you'll notice by this by the fact that 2021, we have uh, hey, we, we got last year's modems working well. Um, yeah. Take, taken a year um, and the so a lot of it is tied around the FCC unlock if you've got a W1 mode on platforms you know what that is and if not it's basically it's some some required um, it's a required tool that we legally have to provide try to unlock the modem uh, and we can only do it once we've passed US carrier certification testing uh, and that's actually been a really big blocker so we have actually done the testing on the X1 yoga I've got to get the number right six um, for last year, it's under review. Carbon 9 will follow, and that means the official unlock uh, method will be released. I, of course, know nothing about any unofficial ones. Um, so that's good. And um, we'll say that the 2022 ones, I'm genuinely optimistic that we will get that out in less, <laughs> less than a year. So it's going really well. Um, the 5G modem, the SM350, needs a change in the B MBIM, which is going upstream and should be the last piece. L860R Plus, which is the 4G modem, that's still got a suspender resume issue that they're working on, but I've been told it should be it. And we even have ready, I think, for firmware updates on LVFS for those. So fingers crossed we'll get those out. They will be out for the rest of the world, not US. Amazing how they think of that as an anyway non-us they will be out first because we have to go do this carrier certification i think we'll get through the carrier certification hopefully a little bit more easily than we did for the last round but i'm not predicting that because it's it's a all righty and uh luna i wish i could answer your question but i'm not allowed to talk about next year's modems beforehand but wink wink all righty uh da -da -da -da. So, ooh, no other questions. Open forum. Anything goes, I can monitor either chat or QA, or I can give you a whole four minutes back. Going once, going twice. Boom. Oh, quiet. There are questions. Did I, did that, oh, I was expecting the little red dot to go. Now I've lost my mouse now. Oh, there you are. Come back, Mass. Alrighty, what are the chances of Z16? Oh, I actually think the chance of the Z16 being available in the US this year are pretty high. They are working through the list now. I asked for it to be prioritized, um, but I don't think that, I don't think they completely listened to me on, on that one. Um, so yeah, it, it should be, I mean, it's a, 
I hate to say it because there's, I think there's good sales on right now. Um, so I, it, it is available. Learn runs well on it. I, I'm on it right now. I will say there's a, there is still uh, an AMD GPU related issue that pops up occasionally. Um, and I know the AMD engineers are working on it. I personally really enjoyed using it, but um, yeah, it's coming up. Ah, uh, any chance we can get a yoga two in one? So I think that is the X12, right, Neil? Um, so I've asked for it. I don't know if it'll get approved. Uh, I don't know why we don't do it. There's a there's been a bunch there's a bunch of people who've been working on it. I saw patches go up. I I don't know why it's not in our program. We don't do the fold or the detachable. Um, and I think that's what you mean. If you deem just the regular yoga, like, um, I mean, the, the, you, I assume you don't mean the one that folds back on itself, right? Anyway, but if you mean the detachable, yeah, it's not in program. And uh, so I mean, for, for dominance, I, I have to get into the Linux program first. So. Uh, do you have information on the effort to fix some of the issues with firmware loading bar that you update manager on? There, I would love some specifics. So firm, uh, LVFS, SWFD is an amazing project and all of our platforms have firmware on it. There are still issues with the firmware team getting firmware out in a timely manner. That's probably one of the biggest issues. Uh, they tend to be a bit late. It always frustrates me that uh, I will get uh, users saying, hey, where's the such and such update that's been released on the Lenovo site, not on LVFS yet. Um, there's always a little delay. They do it on the, they do the release and then they go do the LVFS testing afterwards. So there's always a little bit of a delay, but it should come. There were a whole heap of issues around the ME update this year that were quite annoying. It was, uh, that wanted to get too much into the weeds. They, there was a bug where our BIOS didn't update the SRT table correctly. And it took a long time to get that fixed and then rolled out of the platform. So I'm guessing a little bit, I'd have to know the specifics. Um, I know I spend a fair bit of time on the LVFS GitHub issues. There's a Lenovo section there. If you have problems, make sure to flag them there. It's a great place for firmware update specific issues. Um, so go there. And uh, it's not actually just me there, but we have uh, members of the team in Japan who monitor that as well, look into them. So if you have issues, please, uh, let us know. Um, so, uh, Justin, any plans to offer Lenovo with Linux and Brazil? Yes, I would love to. Uh, Brazil is really interesting, actually. You have some interesting projects to go on um, that are totally unrelated, but that is going back to my help wanted. So, I specifically was told that there was no Linux demand in Latin America. Uh, so, let your product, let them know. That's a perfect one. If, if, if there's a platform, so one of the key things is. We don't do uh, we don't do all of the platforms. Uh, we do ThinkPad, ThinkStation, ThinkCenter. So I know a lot of the idea pads, uh, Legion as well. Apparently, is quite popular in Brazil. Um, so we don't do all of those. Um, but I, I let them know. And yeah, there's there's no reason we shouldn't at this point. I I actually I don't know if I should own up to this. I think I over nagged them. I've been kind of relentless this year. <laughs> and so I kind of was going and going. And eventually, I think they just said, oh, I've got to shut this guy up. And they just sent me a no, which was unfortunate because I was hoping they'd go, got to shut this guy up. We'll send him a yes. But, so I, I have backed off a little bit. Uh, and I will obviously, I will go again next year. But uh, in the meantime, if you can let your local web sales teams know, that would be awesome. Ah. Uh, any major power management issues noticed in Fedora powered laptops? Again, that's kind of, uh, it's quite an open question. Um, there were so challenges this year with um, Order Lake. It's, uh, I mean, great, great CPUs, but they, they're definitely powerful. And uh, early on, um, particularly on the carbon, their performance on Linux was a, a little bit sucky. Uh, so that's been fixed in firmware. Uh, so it's, it was firmware update and it's, it's now pretty good. I will say, uh, and I've, I've said this in a few forms. So we, uh, thermal D in adaptive mode. And if you run thermal D minus minus adaptive 
uh, minus minus no CPU ID check. Do you turn with the help and it tells you, but you have to disable the CPU ID check. Um, it's worth trying, especially if you're seeing problems because that then uses the same thermal tables that Windows uses. Now the problem is it's not officially supported and this is largely because of uh, Intel not wanting to officially support that and my firmware team saying, well, if Intel won't, then we can't. I've used it on a bunch of platforms this year and it's been really good. Now, if you get problems, totally flag them to us, let us know and we can work with the firmware team. They, they did a lot of work to improve it. So uh, I haven't seen any complaints about it recently, which I'm probably going to completely jinx <laughs> by answering this. But um, yeah, it, uh, other than that, I can't think of anything. There was a regression recently where sometimes I think it lost the charging status, but I think there was a kernel regression. Um, if I've missed something specific, let me know. Alrighty. Oops, I suspect I am over. I'm happy to hang around if there's anything else. But if not, come up. Oh, and thank you for posting the FW update issues. So just as a note, for the, in the chat, there's the FW update issues. Um, there is actually a special Lenovo channel for that. And I get those straight to my inbox. So uh, go for it. Alrighty. Thank you, everybody.